Hey class, welcome to Medieval Europe chapter nine. I'm excited to be with you guys today and be going through this lesson. Some of you guys have been, might have already watched this lesson ahead of time, or some of you guys are watching it today, which is Friday. Excited to, um, like I said, go through this lesson with you. I hope you've been having a great week and are staying on top of it and getting caught up with anything that you're behind. Thanksgiving is coming up quick, so make sure you're doing your best to get all of your work done before Thanksgiving so that you can have a wonderful break. So before we dive into chapter nine, let's talk about what we learned in chapter eight. What was the main topic about chapter eight, the main theme that we were learning? That's right, we learned about life in a castle and we learned about castles and what they did. They provided protection for those that live in a castle. Within a castle, it was like a city. They had, you know, they planted and they had fields and they had kitchens and they, that's where they lived. They lived in the castle. We also learned that castles back in the Middle Ages were a little different than what we probably imagine when we look at a, when we watch a movie or read a book, that it wasn't very luxurious. We also learned that castles used to be made out of wood, but then that didn't provide a lot of protection, so they were made out of stones and the castles began to advance with their weapons to advance with the, how warfare was advancing and they used to have cannonballs. So let's get ready to dive into chapter nine, okay? Chapter nine is days of a night. So um, let's think about nights. Probably have a picture or an image in your mind about a night, either through books or movies or, or television. So that let's let's know though that these fic, fic, t, sorry these fictional nights do not behave or they're not the same uh, that nights were actually like in the Middle Ages, right? So we learned about fortresses and castles in the last chapter and why they were necessary to provide protection. So Europe today is a peaceful continent, but for many hundreds of years it was not. War was a large part of life for Europeans during the Middle Ages and for hundreds of years afterward. So this was a warring environment. A lot of war took place during the Middle Ages. The role of a soldier was very important. Now we're going to learn about the role of a knight that they were the perfect symbol of a violent age. Okay, so let's dive into chapter nine and call attention to the big question. The big question is, what was the life of a knight like? And this will really kind of go well as we read about King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. We're able to see some similarities and probably some differences between knights in the Middle Ages, some real knight, sorry, some real knights versus a knight in a book. So as we read, look for answers to what life of a knight was like. Chapter nine, days of a knight. A knight in shiny armor. Okay, well there's our first vocabulary word. And remember, you get extra credit if you submit a sentence using a vocabulary word and you can't take the sentence from this book you got to take you got to create your own sentence using a vocabulary word so armor is metal outer covering worn to protect the body and battle okay so close your eyes close your eyes class imagine a line of knights on horseback marching out of a castle across a drawbridge to fight an enemy it's a bright sunny day and the armor glints or shines in the sunshine. Create a dazzling sight. All right, so knights were highly trained soldiers who served a particular noble or lord as well as the king. They defended land, castles, and people. Knights rode on horses and were usually in positions of leadership on the battlefield. In military terms, a group of knights could change the outcome of a battle. Many brave and successful knights gained land and power. Over time, stories about knights, good and bad, became the subject of many songs of the Middle Ages. So here's a little picture 
kind of about the very beginning of this chapter when we asked you, when I asked you to close your eyes this is kind of what you might have seen something like this knights defending castles in the middle ages okay so how did a boy become a knight what was a knight's training like what did knights do when they weren't fighting battles and we're going to find out as we read on all right, most knights were the sons of noblemen. They began training to become knights when they were even younger than you are now. When a lord's son was seven or eight years old, maybe some of you guys are eight, maybe even seven. Some of you guys are a little bit older than that. So when imagine being seven or eight and being sent away from your home in a castle or manor to live with a relative or overlord, the person who had granted his father a fife. Why was he sent away? In his new home, he would learn to become a knight. The training took many years. In the first stage of training, the young boy served as a page boy. A page boy had to wait on tables and learn the proper manners of a nobleman. Horse riding skills were also very important. That sounds similar to um, what we read in the dynasties of China. Kids being taught at very young ages. Pages practiced their writing skills all the time. Pages also had to become skilled with a sword, as well as other weapons. At first, they learned to fight with fake swords. When a page was about 12, he would become a squire. A squire be uh, was a personal servant to a particular knight. He went everywhere with a knight. He cleaned the knight's armor and weapons and cared for his horse. One of his most important jobs was to help the knight get into his heavy armor. I don't know if you guys have even seen if you've seen the movie A Knight's Tale. Um, I can't. William, I think is his name in the movie. He was a squire to a knight. Um, becoming a knight, depending on his rank, rank, the squire might be knighted any time between the ages of sixteen and twenty. Sometimes a young man who was a member of the highest level of the nobility was knighted at an earlier age. Normally, a young man was knighted. In a solemn ceremony, he stayed up all night praying that he would be a worthy knight. Then he would be presented with, a, with spurs, a sword, a shield, and a helmet. His sponsor, usually the lord, who had taken him as his page, would tap him lightly on the sold, shoulder with a sword and dub him Sir something or other. So, uh, it would be like, Sir Josh, right? I would dub you Sir Josh or... Uh, Leo, one of you guys, being dubbing you guys knights. So not all knights were born into noble families. The rank of a knight was one of the few positions of nobility that a commoner could hope to obtain. Since nobles were usually desperate for brave fighting men, a soldier who showed bravery in battle would occasionally be knighted as a reward. Okay, so we just learned how uh, knights began their training as page boys. Um, when they were seven or eight and they became squires and they learned the manners of being a nobleman, learned how to uh, ride a horse and practice fighting with fake swords. And they became squires and squires took care of a knight. Um, one knight would have a squire with him and the squire would take care of his armor, help the knight get in his armor, ready for battle. And the... Um, and they also looked after the night source. That's what I was looking for. Sorry. Okay. So life of a knight. So an armored knight on horseback was a great fighting machine. Arrows from enemy archers could bounce off the steel plates. The armor also protected him from the enemy's sword or lance. So a lance is a long weapon with a pointed metal tip used by horsemen when charging an opponent. That could be like jousting. And we're, we read a, we've been read it, we've read a lot about jousting and King Arthur. In the Middle Ages, armor was made of sheets of chainmail, metal rings reinforced with plates of steel and key areas. A shirt of chainmail weighed about twenty-five pounds. Under the mail, the knight wore a shell of thick, hard leather. I think about chainmail. I think about the. Chainmail that um, Frodo wore and Lord of the Rings couldn't pierce that chainmail. 
So by 1400, chainmail was replaced by hinged and fitted steel plates that covered a knight from head to toe. A suit of armor could weigh as much as 65 pounds. It was not easy to move around in these metal suits. That's why knights needed squires to help prepare them for battle. However, once on horseback, a knight was a dangerous soldier. Okay, so we just learned that knights wore chainmail um, and steel plates. And then they used to, and at some point, the chainmail was replaced by an, a steel plates covering an armor. Sorry, covering a knight head to toe, kind of like this, or this picture right here. All right, tournaments and chivalry. And we read about a lot of this in King Arthur, so a lot of this might sound really familiar, those that are caught up and on track. So knights had to stay in shape to face the challenges of battle. During peacetime, knights held tournaments. And that is our next vocabulary word. A tournament is a series of contests among more than two competitors competing for an overall prize. So a tournament was a festive, set festive time for everyone on the Lord's Manor Estate. Colorful banners would blow in the breeze on the tournament grounds. Knights painted colorful designs on shields and banners to identify themselves and their families. Sir Lancelot had a design on his shield, you remember? It's gold leopards. A tournament would often attack knights and guests from surrounding castles. Lords and ladies wore their finest robes. Here's a little picture of knights jousting right here and people watching. So lords and ladies wore their finest robes as they watched their favorite knights charge toward each other on horseback. The goal of the competition was to use a lance to knock the opposing knight off his horse. This was called jousting. So a tournament, jousting is a tournament in which two opponents on horseback fight with lances. And again, if you've seen um, A Knight's Tale, there's a lot of jousting in that one. Nobles and serfs alike would bet money on their favorite knight to win the competition. Okay, so let's continue to read. This is another short, short section. So we just have five, six more paragraphs, all right? So make sure you're staying focused and paying attention. If you need to take a break, just pause this video and come back, all right? This is school time, so we gotta be focused, okay? Get our work done. Our, la our second to last section, men of honor. From time to time, knights became a problem for their lords. After all, they were armed men who were trained to settle arguments violently with their swords. Even though they were the lord's vassals and their job was to protect the lord from enemies, there were times when the lords felt threatened by their own knights. To control the knights and their potentially dangerous behavior, lords created a set of rules that knights should follow. These rules were called the Code of Chivalry. All right, and here's a phrase or a vocabulary phrase. So the Code of Chivalry is a set of rules of behavior for knights. And we've learned and we've talked a lot about this and read about it in A Knight's Tale as well. Sorry, not A Knight's Tale, King Arthur. King Arthur, had they had chivalry, right? Those knights of the round table. So knights were supposed to be generous, courteous, loyal, and honorable. There is the Code of Chivalry. And loyal is a big part, right? The lords were afraid and threatened by the knights. And having the knights be loyal kind of probably eased that threatening. And the lords weren't so worried. The code of chivalry required knights to follow certain rules of fighting. For instance, if a knight surrendered, he, can, he couldn't try to escape. He had to try to fight fairly. He could not cheat. Chivalry also required knights to be kind and thoughtful to women. A part of the code called for knights to show loyalty to the lady they served. And Sir Lancelot was doing his best to show loyalty to Queen Genevieve, right? Sometimes a knight who fought in a tournament would tie his lady's scarf to his helmet to show that he was fighting on her behalf. Or a favor, like we read in um, King Arthur this week. Uh, Elaine, um, uh, the... Oh man, I forgot her name. Or her, the Lady of Astolit, right? Had Sir Lancelot wear her favor, her little bridle on his helmet. 
when he went to go hide, fight undercover, right? When he got stabbed by um, King Arthur's men in that tournament. So you can kind of see these connections with the we're reading King Arthur, and this is pretty awesome. So people love to hear romantic stories about the adventures of knights and their ladies. Troubadours or minstrels wrote long songs about knights and ladies. So a troubadour is a person who writes and performs poetry set to music. Minstrels traveled about singing and performing these songs for those who would play to listen. All right, so um, we've learned that knights have uh, come primarily from the ranks of the nobles in the Middle Ages, right? So a knight had to keep and maintain not only his armor, weapons, and swords, but also his horse. And that is why he also had a squire to help maintain those things. Because these equipment was expensive. Few commoners were able to afford such things. And those are the things that the knight used in battle. And then we learned about the Code of Chivalry, which was a set of rules and expected behaviors for knights to follow. These rules helped protect people, including lords, from violence at the hands of knights. In addition, it gave lords more control over their knights, right, to be loyal. And it finally, and also, it improved the public's image of knights. All right, our last section, and then we'll refer to the big question and we'll be all done. So, mounted soldiers. What happened to knights? Medieval knights, as we think of them, slowly disappeared, but mounted, sol mounted soldiers did not. Mounted soldiers were ne still needed in battle. They could lead a charge or launch a surprise attack. Their horse riding skills and ability to use a range of weapons meant they were essential on the battlefield. In the end, mounted soldiers, although no longer noble knights bound to the a code of chivalry, remained a key part of war for warfare for hundreds of years. Okay, so make sure you do your chapter vocabulary and do and participate in the big question discussion post. So, what was the life of night? What was the life of a knight like? Some key points would be um, when did they train, and what was their name when they were such a young age? Remember, seven or eight, and then what did they become after that? specific name starting with an s and while they were that they took care of a knights they were kind of under a knight's tutelage a knight took them under their wing and taught them things um then they were they would have been become knighted right and then they participated in tournaments and then they followed a certain set of rules and what was that called Okay, so those are some, some key points and hints to help you with your big question. And that is our lesson for today. Hope you guys had a great week. Those that are watching this on Friday, those that are watching it earlier, it's awesome that you're getting on top of it and getting ahead. That's really, really good. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm here to help you guys. I know online school isn't the best, but if you can set a specific time each day and get in a school mode and kind of have a school environment at home, it will make it a lot easier, make it easier for you to be focused, make sure you don't have any distractions around you. Don't be around the TV or computer, like, or you don't have to be on the computer, you have to be on the computer for online, um, but make sure you don't have any other tabs open like YouTube or whatever, unless you're watching this, but <laughs> try not to. Go to other videos that will distract you, just get your work done and then um, you'll be able to have time to hang out and do stuff after. If you just stay on top of it, school should only be probably around, you know, three or four hours a day, really. Like, if you stay on top of it and get your work done, all of you guys that are at home, school should basically kind of be shorter than it used to be, and you should have more free time, but you have to stay on top of it. If you get behind, you'll have a lot of days and a lot of time where you have to make up those assignments, and I promise you that won't be fun. So get caught up if you're not and stay on top of it if you are and you should be able to um, have a more enjoyable experience with this online school. I know COVID and this experience isn't the best, but you can make the best of it by doing what you need to do to stay on top of it, okay? You guys are awesome, keep it up and I will see you guys in the next video.